For me, um, a lot of this work started back in my PhD work, back, back at Oxford, and I, I came there as a Rhodes Scholar and in some ways had the freedom to kind of study, you know, whatever I wanted. And so I took that freedom to kind of study a new branch of mathematical physics that was, was just emerging. And I didn't quite know where that was going to lead me, but over the course of that PhD work, it led me into this um, world of war and conflict and insurgency. And we started to use mathematical tools to start to uncover um, signatures of attacks in Iraq and bombings in Afghanistan and, and kidnappings in Colombia. And, and, and this world of sort of insurgency was something that we could start to analyze. And as we analyzed it, we uncovered these mathematical signatures and these signatures started to define the way people were dying in conflict. And so I kind of took that through and, you know, it, it, we, we did very well um, within the academic world. But one of the things I guess I realized um, from that was um, that it was all well and good for me to sit down and kind of create these um, insights. But what I really wanted to do was create a product that would let other people do that for themselves. But I knew I sort of had an idea and I knew that I needed some money to make it real. And I'd also heard that, I guess, there were these things called venture capitalists that would give you the money to kind of take bets on kind of wild ideas. And through friends from Oxford, we had connections into Peter Thiel. And Peter Thiel was this, this person who I'd sort of heard about as being quite visionary and also a little bit of a maverick in terms of the risks and the bets he would take. So for me sitting there with this machine that would predict and <laughs> modify and analyze conflict and war, I thought this is a great person for me to go and meet. And you know, by luck and by chance, we, we managed to get a breakfast, um, a break, a breakfast uh, meeting with Peter Thiel and at his house. And so me and my, my partner went down to Peter's house and uh, we sat down and had breakfast and uh, he was smoked salmon and his, his butler came and uh, <laughs> delivered the food. I don't know if it was his butler or his assistant, but I thought it was his butler at the time. We sat down and talked about um, what, we, what I was making. And, um, you know, he basically said, look, you know, you've done this work on mathematics and you've, you've got some great insights, but we need to turn that into a product. And you know, to turn that into a product, you need money. <laughs> and we sort of talked and he kind of said, you know, well, how much do you need? I said, I don't know, how much can you give me? And <laughs> you sort of go backwards and forwards, but he ended up writing um, a check for $2.5 million. And it seemed like a huge amount of money at the time. And, and indeed it was for, you know, someone coming out of, you know, little old New Zealand to get $2.5 million um, to go and start a company based on the idea that you could augment human intelligence. That was pretty cool. And so two and a half weeks later, um, the check uh, from Peter and, and, and the Founders Fund hit our bank account and, and we're off to the races. So when I sit down to explain to people um, kind of how Quid works, I start talking about creating an augmented intelligence platform that allows people to explore a virtual three-dimensional environment um, where they're mapping ideas um, and the evolution of ideas instead of looking at the, uh, the relationship between cities on a normal map. And most people at that point kind of glaze over a little bit because this sounds a little bit like science fiction. But perhaps the easiest thing we can do is to get out there and go and have a look and see this thing running in person. We're going to take um, the software and use it to explore the world of commercial space. You know, the world of SpaceX and Boeing and Lockheed and NASA and, and all of that stuff. And it's, it's going to be a little bit different, what, I guess, to what people are normally used to, is we're going to download tens of thousands of documents and we're going to lay that out almost like it was a map. Then we're going to go in and explore the different parts of it. We're going to see what the different clusters are. We're going to see what the dominant stories are within them. We're going to see what are the kind of the emerging ideas that are bubbling up. And we're going to upload all of that information that's out there on the internet into a human mind. And we're going to try and do that in a short period of time. This, at the moment, is only deployed to the US military. And the closest equivalent software is military grade. And what we have done 
is take that down a level. So instead of selling it to the military for 50 million, we sell it to corporations for hundreds of thousands. And where we are at the moment is it still requires a very powerful machine and it requires a lot of training. And the hope is over the next 12 months that we take the same uh, technology and put it into the web browser and bring that cost right down to a few hundred dollars so that anyone out there with access to a web browser can go and explore very, very complex ideas and almost become an expert by using the software.